Hello, John Britt here. All right, today we're going to talk about an important thing about glazes is flocculation and deflocculation and problems that happen. Okay, so what the basic idea is is that all uh, glazes are either acidic or basic depending on uh, what's happening with the materials. So a lot of ceramic materials are soluble in water. That means they dissolve in water. That's why you don't pour the water off. Uh, one particular one is called nephsi. This uh, has a lot of sodium in it, so it will deflocculate. That means it'll, uh, what we have to do is that's a base, sodium, so we have to go back towards an acid, so we add Epsom salts. I'll show you what generally happens. If you have a bucket of glaze here, and then at the bottom of this bucket is this rock hard in there. And you, in order to get that out, a lot of times people will took a drill and try to get it. But the best way is to use one of these loop tools and cut it like this. You can see how easily that cuts. And then what you do is you just put that into your bucket. Uh, and, then, and then what we'll do is agitate it with this... this uh, and once that's moving, you will then be able to very easily... Um, mix it up. Don't just sit there with your drill. Now here's an example of a thixotropic solution. See how when I'm, this is nephsi, when I'm pushing it like this it's real hard but when I shake it, it just starts moving, becomes fluid. Okay, that is an example of a, it's a basic or deflocculated uh, material. So what we're going to do then is we're, uh, usually what I'll do is I'll have a little cup of Epsom salts here, two tablespoons of Epsom salts dissolved in a cup of water. And I have that with a brush. And a lot of times if I have a glaze, this has a lot of nephsi in it. What I'll do is I will be getting ready to use my glaze and I'll go, oh, it's too watery. It's all, uh, I know it's deflocculated. So I just take a couple drops and I don't know if you can see, watch me put this in, but see how that puffs up? Then I will mix it. Then I'll add a little bit more. You can just add a little bit at a time, and then it sh should become. I'll show you how it gets probably. See how thick that has become now. Now that's pretty good. I may add a little more. I'll try to go overboard. So that's probably pretty thick now. Okay? So that just shows you how to correct that problem. Now, one way, uh, one problem is, is that if a glaze does not have clay in it, uh, it's hard to make the Epsom salts work. You want to have a clay particle which you can charge positive or negative. And so the first thing, if you have this problem, is to check that it has bentonite in it. You want to have 1 to 2 percent bentonite. That may solve your problem. You may then add another solution, maybe to add bentonite and then add Epsom salts. See how it goes. Over the course of time, glazes will move back and forth. The electrons exchange in there, and so it's never going to be perfect. It's always in a transitional phase, and so you have to watch glazes. Another thing you would do if you still had a problem was add like two, one to two percent CMC, and that may help. That's a gum, and that may help um, suspend your uh, glaze. And if you wanted to uh, not do that, you could add B gum sir, which is V-gum, which is like bentonite, it's uh, like a macaloid and a uh, CMC mixed together. So you can just add one thing. Okay, that's that deal. Now let's go to the next problem, which is called um, flocculated glaze. So that means this glaze is more acidic. And so it looks, let me get a mixer here. This glaze looks very thick. Uh, so you would automatically think, oh, I'm going to just add water to that and thin it out so it's the right, th but that's not good. Water causes shrinkage in this case, and so you'll see what happened when I dip the tiles. See how it's flaking off and falling on the bottom? That means it, it's, it's not adhering. There's too much shrinkage. So the way that you check to see... The, okay, here. The reason I know this is flocculated is because it has bone ash in it. Bone ash uh, will over time flocculate a glaze. So these khaki glazes will often, this will often happen to them. This is called Bailey's Red, it's a khaki. So here's what I do to test my theory to make sure you don't mess up the whole studio bucket. Is I will put some gla uh, glaze in a little cup like that and I will take some of this Darvan uh, 811 or you could say Darvan 7 or sodium silicate. I will then put a couple, so you can see how thick it is. 
pretty thick. Now I'll put a couple drops in there. See if I can. Oh, yeah, see now that's much thinner now. Maybe I'll try a little bit more. It's hard to do with one hand. I'll try a little bit more. Okay, that's better. That's much thinner. So now I know that that's the that is the solution. So then I will pour that cup back into the bucket and uh, then add a few. You know, like if I did two drops in this two cups, and I know I have ten cups, you know, I, I'll multiply it out and figure it out. Okay, and then I would come and dip my tile and and see if it's. You can also tell a lot of times when a glaze is flowing on a tile if it's real runny and it makes drips that stick like they are, that's deflocculated. If it's real thick and, uh, and dries real slow, it's probably flocculated. So this is looking a lot better. Still drying a little slow. So we may have a problem. But that's what I would do. And then I would let that sit and see if it did the same thing. And if not, I should be all set. So that covers our flocculation and deflocculation. I hope it helps explain it. All right, we'll see it.